Hey everybody, Don Carr here from Sweetwater, and today I want to look at the PRS Modern Eagle. What exactly is the PRS Modern Eagle and why does it matter? Now these questions got on my radar when this guitar that was previously private stock only became a core model. Now in PRS terminology, that translates as it went from a limited run custom order to something that is regularly made and available. So as I looked a little deeper, I realized that this version, the one I have in my hand here, the Modern Eagle 5, was also one of the most versatile guitars that PRS had ever made. I mean, it has all the practical stuff you need, nothing superfluous or too hyper-specific, and an elegant, intuitive switching system, and all the pickup combinations sound really good and they flow together seamlessly. The other stuff that PRS guitars do so well was basically a given great playability and feel, amazing intonation, sonic balance from string to string and all up and down the neck, and of course, beautiful wood and finish choices. For me, that's really when the question started though. So how did this guitar come to be? What are the four previous versions? And why is version five a core model? And what the heck even is a Modern Eagle? Doing research of my own led to a lot of fragmented info. So I contacted a few of the folks I know at PRS and the complete picture really started coming together. The first piece of info I got was a detailed outline of every version of the Modern Eagle, complete with specs, options, and dates. Thank you, Jim Cullen. That alone helped put things into perspective. My initial thought was that Modern Eagle was a best of the best guitar, which is true to a point. Yeah, they all have premium hand-picked wood and all the latest hardware, but I came to find out that the Modern Eagle ethos was more about exploring the possibilities, trying specific combinations of any and every variable to see what works and what makes a difference. Basically a place for Paul and the PRS team to try stuff out and learn, and when they thought they had something, it became the latest Modern Eagle. So 2004 was the first Modern Eagle, 2006 introduced the single cut trim version, 2008 was the Modern Eagle 2, 2009 the 25th anniversary Modern Eagle 3, and 2011 brought the Quattro. Then there was a bit of a hiatus. The 5 was brought out in 2018 as a private stock limited guitar, then in 2020 it was a core experience limited edition, and eventually in 2023 it was a core production model, which is what I'm holding right here. If you're interested in the complete Modern Eagle timeline with specs and photos, check out the History of PRS Modern Eagle article at Sweetwater.com. There's a link in the description. I felt that the best way to find out what's really going on with the Modern Eagle is the Ask the Man that created and championed the whole thing, Paul Smith. Fortunately, he happened to be here at Sweetwater and agreed to sit down to talk about it. To really spark the conversation, I asked some of the folks here at Sweetwater that had Modern Eagle guitars to bring them by and see what Paul had to say about them. Here's that conversation. Uh, Don, God. what's with all the Modern Eagles, man? What, Dude, what, what you, I, what, why? I hear, why? Oh, so check this out. I didn't know anything about the Modern Eagle until it became a core model. I mean, I'd heard people talking about Modern Eagle this, Modern Eagle that. They were all special but, runs of good I, guitars. Yeah, they were the amazing guitars, man. And so I got the five and freaking fell in love with it. And so I wanted to go backwards and figure out what's what. Started looking around, couldn't figure out a whole lot. And I thought, man, who better to ask than you? And thank you. Yeah, but these all came from this. private collections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so how did you hunt them up? Oh, man, just we're fortunate. People around here have them. Ah, people yeah, at the legendary Sweetwater. Indeed. They all just sound great. I mean, and feel great. And they do that thing that, like, every PRS I've ever played does, where it's just even all the way across That's the well, spectrum. That, I love that, man. The even part's important because a really good guitar is really bright on the low strings and thick on the high strings. And a bad mm -hmm. guitar is really, really bassy on the bass strings and really thin on the high strings. Mm -hmm. And these things were intended to be, you know, clear on the low strings, lots of harmonics, and thick up top. Why do you like this guitar so much? A couple of reasons specifically. I mean, all of the good stuff, of course, like we talked about how it's even, it plays great, sounds great, very functional, looks great, easy to hold. Like, I mean, it just all, all of those things. But sonically, that particular combination of those pickups does the thing that I was looking for, where it's like you can seamlessly switch from bridge to neck, 
single coil to, um, to humbucker, and it's just a color palette. It's not any drastic changes. It's just a color palette. It's, it's like the same type of sound, slightly altered. So it's so usable, just ultimately usable. Well, that little teeny middle pickup was meant for mixing. Did you end up using it at all? Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, was, my gosh. To make a pickup that small was a little risky because it, it's hard to get enough wire on it to get it to sound good. But I thought we got them to the point where they were good mixing pickups. Oh, yeah, they absolutely sound great, oh, man. I mean, it, it blends like that. You, and I think it's so brilliant the way you did the slug coils on the on the humbuckers and you got the spacing right yeah. and it lines up. This is the R&D thing, man. This is all those little tiny details that you chase down, like, okay, what kind of saddle do we use? What kind of nut do we use? What kind of material are we going to, you know, all of that stuff. You know what's interesting? We argue about this stuff. It, I mean, they're not arguments like people mad at each other right it's like impassioned discussions about what's the appropriate thing and sometimes i get it what i think is perfect and they'll they'll nah and they'll wave it off i'm like wait a minute i worked for years on this <laughs> nah i don't think so but you, if you don't listen to what they have to say you might miss pieces that would make it absolutely better yeah. And for me, working on that middle pickup, I worked on it for a long time to get it to sound right. And I kept, I kept waving it off going, not, 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 not. And then finally we got it right. So it was cool. uh, Man, it shows. Yeah. I, seriously. I mean, I that's... I didn't want it to be in the way when you picked the guitar. I mm -hmm. wanted it to be small and out of the way. So initially, what was your thought about when you made the first Modern Eagle? Well, they were just rosewood neck guitars, and the whole idea is that, is that the neck had a real strength to it, which gave the guitar real strength. A really, really thin neck, sometimes you get a thin tone. Mm -hmm. And a really big neck guitar, you get a big tone, but so if the neck's too big, you can't play it. And for me, I was just trying to get a, a really strong sounding guitar, and the rosewood seemed to do it. I have a question for you. Okay. How did you get a better shirt than me today? <laughs> now, you know, I... <laughs> This it came from Spain. I mean, it looks like something from, from Istanbul or something. Yeah. And, and it's really, that's a, this is exotic, That's man. a good-looking shirt, yeah, man. Yeah, well, you just, That's a good-looking shirt. This is an off-the-rack, no, man. No, I don't think like so. This is just like a department store that no, off-the-rack. No, but you know what? You no, just walk in. No, no, give me the have, shoe. Give me the shoe. Okay. Give me the shoe. Look, everybody. He you even in, got the shoe the to match the shirt. What give can me, I say, man? Put the shoe back on. What you? I got, hey, I got dressed in the dark this morning, Paul. I can't have it. Well, that's obvious, but I <laughs> so did I, and I'm sorry you beat me. Oh, All right, so what can I so say? let me get okay. my guitar, okay, and we'll see if my guitar beats your guitar. Oh, wait right. a minute yeah, now. Yeah, let's oh, yeah pull no. your guitar down. Oh, Hold no. on a minute. All right. No, no. What happened was this came off the line. Yeah. It was a basically a modern eagle it came off the line, and it was as good as the guitar I was playing or better, and it had a voice to it, which you heard today. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. The question is. Who's got a better shirt? Is it yours <laughs> or mine? <laughs> Man, I yeah. actually, I, I'm I, actually partial to blue jean blue. I know, I know. You might have beat me on the guitar. I mean, Man, but this is really cool. That but, is so cool. Yeah. I love this top. Look at look at all the craziness in this top, yeah. though. Man, I freaking love. Now I, that's beautiful. Got, I got shirted and out guitar. <laughs> there was an interview with Jimmy Page okay. about how he played "Whole Lot of Love." Okay, and what he did was he bent. He was bending. Now, I always thought it was a chorus pedal. That's the way he played it. Yeah, it's against the unison open. Both yeah. of them open. Right, Sometimes right. the G's ring too. Yeah, yeah. So, that, you, so do it. Mm. That's it. That's it. All right, so yeah, show me your favorite lick. Okay. Ooh, my favorite lick. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going <laughs> to. This is like the music store lick. I call this a music okay, story. Cool. Like you know, you've got everybody's got music story. Like here's here's one here's one good music story. I stole it from Brent Mason. Well, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. Well, yeah. If you of steal course, from one not? spot, it's stealing. You steal from ten spots, it's research. It's right, yeah. This is research. <laughs> right, cool. This is full on there research. Go, yeah. So it's so it's. That's beautiful. Isn't that great? That's great. Isn't that great? And Brent Mason came up with that. Oh yeah, yeah, a long time ago, like a long time ago. That's, like do it again. Go down another half step. Go. God, that's just nasty. I can't. 
I, I will go to my deathbed not being able to do that lick. <laughs> so this one is owned by um, David Mikatauze, who's one of the uh, one of the sales engineers here, really good guitar player. He said, this is an heirloom. He said, this guitar is absolutely an heirloom. Well then, dang it. Yeah, yeah. and he said he's played the heck out of it too, man. He said, that's gonna be all scratched up. You know, it's always a pleasure to see you, Don. Good to see you too, Paul. I'd like to thank everyone that brought their guitars by, Mitch Gallagher, David Mikatauze, Austin Putt, and Phil Rich. I'd also like to thank Jim Cullen and everyone at PRS who provided me with valuable inside info. Thank you for watching and taking an interest in the PRS Modern Eagle. If you'd like to find out more about the Modern Eagle 5 or the PRS private stock guitars, check out Sweetwater.com or contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Mm -hmm.